Hi everyone, my name is Victor Wu. I'm a product manager at GitLab. Today I wanted to show you a new feature. Um, it's called scoped labels. So what you see on the screen right now is a bunch of labels on this labels screen. And you can see that um, there's a scoping for these purple labels. It says platform, double colon, Android, Ubuntu, Windows, and so forth. And then same with state with these blue labels. So you can already see uh, what I mean by scoped labels is that there's a scope um, and then there's a value. So all of these belong to the same scope because they share platform double colon, not because they're the same color. I could actually use different colors, but the scoping will recognize um, the, the, the word platform, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me show you how to use scope labels um, before coming back to talk about how you manage um, and create scoped labels. So one way to use scope labels that is very interesting is you can use them effectively like custom fields. So again, going back to this, um, this example here with the purple scoped labels, this is essentially a custom field um, that uh, say you wanted to assign uh, any number of issues, merge requests, or even epics to say that um, you associate with them um, a custom field that says identify it as what um, operating system or what platform. So what you can do here is that say this particular feature that you're working on represented by this issue, you want it to say that it belongs to uh, iOS. And so what you can do is you can assign that to iOS and then right away it, has, it gets that label and it does exactly what you would expect it to do. <clears throat> and then you see the nice system note here as well. And it also even says, as you know, scoped label. Now say now I'm looking at this issue and now I've decided that oh, I, I actually added the wrong label, or it's actually not iOS, it's actually Android. I put in the wrong uh, custom field, as it were. What I could do now is actually click Android, and what happens is that now Android, the Android label is applied, platform double colon Android, and iOS is automatically removed. So that's precisely how scoped labels work. Given this object, this issue, it can only contain um, one scoped label of that given scope, namely platform colon. To be more specific, um, the correct uh, logic is, um, is, is um, put into place when you actually apply the label. That's when the logic is adhered to. But in any case, you can see how this, um, you've been able to use this platform double colon as a custom field. So say you have any, um, if you have any use of a custom field with an enumerated number of options, this is a great way to use this feature. Another way to use uh, scoped labels, and now that you understand that they're essentially mutually exclusive labels, is for workflow states. And so you can see these states, um, you know, development, um, review, production, uh, ready, represent um, workflow states. So I've already set up a board here, and so you can see here, uh, you have these workflow states represented up top, um, in this uh, Agile workflow board. So if you've been using GitLab for a while, this should seem familiar. And some of you might have even used um, state colon something, and we purposely chose double colon because um, we looked at our user data and we, we found out that double colon is not being used very much. So we thought that would be a good way to uh, release this feature uh, for, for something that's not being used, or, or the, the, the title in particular, the label title. But anyways, back to the feature. So how you could use this is exactly as you've been using issue boards before. You can drag this issue over one at a time, as you see. So at first, this doesn't seem like um, it's anything new. And indeed, there's nothing new with this particular view. Um, you're able to drag issues one over the other in this workflow board. But what's really super relevant is when I actually go on to the issue itself, and you can see that it went into development and then went into ready and then went into review. Um, and what's important is that when it went into these stages, GitLab automatically removed the previous stage. So prior to this feature, if you wanted to use labels to represent states in a workflow, it would work very well in this case because when you drag an issue from one state to another state, um, the previous label is removed and the new label is added. But if you try to do the same thing here, you would have to do it in two steps. You would have to add the new label and then remove the previous label. And some of our users were saying that that's very cumbersome, it's not very intuitive. 
but now what you can do is if you're in this issue and you're not looking at the workflow board, so maybe you're a developer, maybe you're a QA engineer, and you're not looking at the workflow board all the time, but you're just looking at one particular issue and you want to change the state, advance the state. If you want to go to review all the way to production, you can do that. And once you put it into production, it automatically re uh, removes the review state for you, as you'll see the, the system note right here. And so there's no confusion. There is only one mutually exclusive uh, workflow state as you've, as you've set it up. So how do you create these workflow labels, or these, uh, sorry, these uh, scoped labels in the first place? And what we've done uh, in GitLab to design this feature is something we think um, that's very interesting and to make it very, very simple. We haven't added any additional menus or additional UI to make it complicated. All we've done actually is just uh, asked our users, yourself, as if you're watching this video, just to include the double colon. By including the double colon, a label becomes a scoped label. That's all that happens. Um, that's all that's required. So once you click edit here, so pretending I'm creating this uh, label for the first time, and I added this double colon, and there's this nice new little help text telling you about that, um, this will automatically become a scoped label. So the moment I remove the double colon and do say like a dash, it's no longer a scoped label. So I click save, and I go back, and you can see this little helpful question mark is not there anymore, um, indicating that it's not a scoped uh, label. So I'm going to go back, click edit, changing back, double colon, and now it's a scope label. So that's all I did. I didn't have to click any checkbox or anything. GitLab recognizes it's a scoped label simply by the double colon. So that's really all that there is to scope labels. It's, it's really simple and we really like it. So this feature um, is available uh, on the premium tier. So um, that is uh, for self-managed instances of GitLab and for GitLab.com, which I'm showing you right now, it's available for silver and above. So if you're using GitLab.com, this feature is already available. And if you have a group on GitLab.com with a silver subscription or a gold subscription, and you create any labels in that particular group or in the subgroups or projects of that you know, group hierarchy, then you will have access to this uh, functionality. If you're not in one of those tiers and you use the double colon syntax, uh, GitLab will just ignore it. You, it will just be used, uh, treated as a single, uh, as a, as a non-scope label, a regular label. So again, if you're on GitLab.com, um, it will be available for silver and gold subscription. For self-hosted instances, uh, this will be available for the premium tier and the uh, ultimate tier. And this feature will be made available uh, in on October 22nd, so that's 11 days out in GitLab 11.10. Um, and again, that's on April 22nd for self-hosted instances. But if you're using GitLab.com, it's already available. Thanks for watching.